Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we are talking about a woman who has spent almost $2,000 on a leg sleeve full of serial killers. And it's not only this one woman, many people have portraits of serial killers forever inked on their bodies. So buckle in, that's what we're getting into today. But if you are new here, my name is Sal EST. I'm on a journey towards becoming a tattoo artist myself and I make tattoo related content right here every week. So this is Brittany Chamberlain. Brittany is 29 years old, frontal lobe fully developed. What's so strange about this story to me is that Brittany looks just like so normal. She just looks like your average sorority girl. Like this photo would be on her mom's fridge if not for the serial killers in our words in full photo color realism on her leg. But then again, sorority girls can be pretty terrifying. Like maybe Britney's in that one sorority. Like you know that one that greets you when you get to hell? So Brittany told a news media outlet that she is obsessed with serial killers and she's been obsessed with them for quite some time. In fact, now she is studying forensic psychology and she said that she's fascinated by what compels murderers to commit heinous acts. But we'll get more into Brittany's reasoning behind these tattoos a little later. Let's focus on the tattoos themselves to begin with. On Britney's upper thigh, she has a portrait of the late Ted Bundy, infamous serial killer and R word. And then there's a quote next to the portrait that says, I don't feel guilty for anything. I feel sorry for people who feel guilt. The choice of quote just baffles me. And this quote is from Ted Bundy, who killed at least 20 women in the 1970s. And this is a quote he once told an investigator. And then moving down to Britney's calf, this is apparently her favorite tattoo, which is a portrait of the late serial killer and cannibal Jeffrey Dahmer, who murdered 17 men and boys from the 1970s to the 1990s. And the quote she chose to go next to Dahmer is, if you can't beat him, eat him. And in the portrait, he is holding a human brain in his hands. Let's remember what this woman looks like one more time. This is like one of those photos of like, what here doesn't belong? And I will tell you that it's the cannibalistic serial killing R words that doesn't belong in this image. Now that I really look at this photo though, that dog is trying to escape and she is holding on to him for dear life. But the dog knows. Dogs always know something we don't know. That's all I'm gonna say, the dog knows. In an interview with the Daily Star, Brittany said that she doesn't regret spending over 1,500 pounds, so that's about 18, 1,900 US dollars, on her serial killer tattoos. And she even said that she wants to expand these tattoos, adding Jack the Ripper and Ed Gein. And Brittany insists that she's not glorifying the serial killers that she has tattooed on her. And she said, quote, I don't condone the hostile crimes of serial killers by any means. I'm simply intrigued as to why they do it. The way I have designed the sleeve is to deter glorification for artistic expression. In the end of the day, you're having art made of someone. That's a tribute to that person, no matter what you say, and that's on your body forever. If you don't condone the acts of these individuals, why would you pay tribute to them on your skin every single day? And the way that she went about it really doesn't match up with the idea that she's not glorifying their acts. And I think the quotes really make this so much worse. Like the portraits itself is pretty fucked up, but the quotes are directly from the killers and the quotes that she chose really expose like the sick and the twisted mindset of these men. And I feel like it really is glorifying the acts that they committed. It's almost like so seriously twisted that it seems like a joke. And it seems to just be for shock value in my opinion. Like the quote, if you can't beat them, eat them. That's just such a shockingly disrespectful quote. And to have a portrait of him holding a human brain, like is that supposed to be one of the victim's brains? 
that's now on your body and you're saying that this man's going to eat it, it's just like for anyone with any ounce of empathy within them, that's a shockingly disrespectful thing to do. Brittany tried to justify her actions and she said, quote, thousands of people each year get fictional characters tattooed on them, like Hannibal and Freddy Krueger. They are all serial killers, yet this portrayal is accepted as it's not real. Now riddle me that. I will never understand when people try to justify their actions by bringing up actions of others. Just so irrelevant, but clearly there's a difference between a fictional depiction of a serial killer and a real-life human being who has real-life victims' families still alive today. And the tattoo artist who's working on these tattoos is Damien Wickham, who owns the tattoo shop Ink Attack in the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia. And I don't even want to mention the technical quality of these tattoos. In my opinion, the tattoo artist is just as much at fault here as Britney is. And maybe that's not a super popular opinion. To me, it's similar when filmmakers are depicting serial killers and they choose to make the serial killer attractive to the viewer. So take Netflix's Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil, and Vile, for example. And similarly to Britney, Zac Efron said in an interview at the Sundance Film Festival that he felt a responsibility to make sure the film wasn't a celebration of Ted Bundy, but a psychological study of the person that he was. And whether the film did or did not glorify Ted Bundy is another discussion. I think as artists, we do have a responsibility for how we portray the subjects of our art, especially if those are real people. Yeah, this is Britney's body and she can do whatever she wants. And this is the tattoo artist's artwork and he can do whatever he wants. But as much as they want to pretend that they live in a vacuum, their actions and the art that they create does affect other people. And while it might not be a legal responsibility, I do think it's a social responsibility to not portray serial killers this way. And there definitely is a general negativity towards both the artist and Brittany in the Instagram comments of the tattoos. One person said, really hope one day she's in a grocery store line and one of the victim's family members confronts her. Maybe then it won't be a Netflix show to her and she'll realize these people have real families in real pain. Shame on you as a tattoo artist for putting their faces on a body like this. Absolute shame on you. Another comment says she should ask the victim's families what's their opinion about it. Sorry for you to agree making them. I guess money is first, then ethics. So there is this real psychological condition, and I'm going to try to pronounce it. It's called hybristophilia. This condition is a sexual interest in and an attraction to those who commit crimes, particularly heinous and violent crimes. And it's sometimes referred to as Bonnie and Clyde syndrome. And usually this condition is present in women. And according to Catherine Ramsland, who is a professor of forensic psychology at DeSales University, Catherine interviewed women who had married or dated serial killers and asked them about why they did that. And a common trait for these women was low self-esteem and a lack of a father figure. Some women also believed that they could change a man as evil as a serial killer. Others see the little boy that the killer once was and seek to nurture that part of him. And then a few hope to share in the media spotlight or get like a book or a movie deal out of their relationship. And I'm not saying that Britney has this condition. I just think it's a really interesting, real psychological phenomenon that sometimes women are genuinely attracted to serial killers. And I know we all joke about getting tattooed being like going to therapy, but some people really just need to go to therapy. And I do understand being interested in the minds of serial killers. I enjoy true crime documentaries and podcasts and things like that. There really is something fascinating about 
how completely different someone's mind works from your own. With that being said though, I do think that there's a very clear line between being interested in these people and their mindset. And then there's like a strange, tasteless, weird, disrespectful obsession with these men. And I feel like that's the line that Britney and this tattoo artist have crossed, in my opinion. And to be fair, Britney is not the only person doing this. A simple search on Instagram for serial killer tattoo shows a lot of portraits of real life serial killers. Full color realism, other full sleeves. This person even has a portrait of Ed Kemper on their hand. A whole side realism portrait of Ted Bundy. This one guy has a whole back of a bunch of serial killers and news headlines. We could try to give these people the benefit of the doubt. They may have sensationalized these killers so much in their minds that it feels like fiction to them. They don't see a difference between Jeffrey Dahmer and Freddy Krueger. And it doesn't feel like these are real people with real victims because we see them on TV. Regardless, do I think it's right? No. Would I get one? No, absolutely not. Do I think it's cute? No. Is it our place to tell people what they can and can't get tattooed? Also no. But does this affect real people living today? Yeah. And I think it's okay for us to discuss that. But you will have to let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think that this is harmless, doesn't really affect anyone? Or do you think that this is seriously wrong? Let me know in the comments down below. But if you've made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If you have, leave me this emoji in the comments so that I know that you are a real one. Bye everyone.